friends, I am Aparajita Singha and people call me Appa for short. Um, I am in QNS as a postdoc uh, working with the Inisoku machine. Um, we are four postdocs in this team myself, Philip Wilke, uh, Tanner Isat, and um, Shui Zhang. And this team is um, supervised by our uh, group leader, Professor Tian Choi. So, our team uh, has this Inisoku machine that can um, manipulate single atoms, so it is an STM that can manipulate single atoms and molecules at very, very low temperature, down to 300 millikelvin in ultra-high vacuum. My typical day starts um, uh, in the lab at around uh, 9 in the morning. Um, on that particular day, uh, I was uh, supposed to come earlier than the others because the others uh, left uh, for home quite late uh, the night before. Usually we have shifts and I'm going to talk about that later on. Um, on a typical day, uh, the first thing I would do in the lab is to have a look at the pressure readings of different chambers. Uh, this is important because we should know if our atoms or our samples are clean enough unless something unexpected happened, um, it should be the case. So usually I would look at the pressure as well as the temperature um, because if the temperature warms up we have to do certain procedure to cool it down again. So here we have an STM which means we have a very sharp metal tip that can go and uh, scan across a surface and this is the way to image single atoms and molecules on the surface. But that is very basic. We want to do something more. We want to do magnetic characterization. For that we need a magnetic tip and for that what we do essentially is to uh, pick up single uh, atoms from the surface and try to have magnetic contrast from the tip. So on that particular day we were scanning iron atoms, single iron atoms on MGO substrate and essentially we first scan the surface in order to make sure that we have single atoms. Those single atoms can have also some spectroscopic uh, fingerprints so we can identify them and then by atom manipulation techniques uh, we can pick up single iron atoms from the surface once we have picked up a couple of them, typically three or four, uh, the tip gets some magnetic contrast. So typically when you do not have magnetic contrast on the tip, um, this is visible from the histogram that you um, see now and um, if there is no magnetic contrast essentially you will have only one histogram. Um, if you have a magnetic contrast you will have two separated peaks here. Um, this is the typical signature. Usually when we do not have magnetic tip we just keep trying with our atom manipulation technique. So we pick up atoms, drop it on the surface, pick up a few more and check again with our um, histogram um, or with uh, typical uh, spectroscopic techniques. Once you have the magnetic tip, um, if you have not done something very bad with it, uh, like poking on the surface, usually it can last uh, very long. So um, one tip that we had uh, lasted uh, something like uh, two months or so uh, without uh, having any trouble. So typically if somebody comes in the lab, the first thing to do would be to update them about what happened so far. And this is what I am doing now with Shue. Uh, later on, when uh, Professor Teang Choi would come in, we would just update him again and we would brainstorm a little bit all together in order to make plans about uh, the rest of the day and uh, for the following days. At that moment, we were measuring electron spin resonance on single iron atoms on MGO. And we were in the beginning having trouble to make our magnetic tip. Once we had that, um, we were making plans about what different measurement regimes we can explore and this was part of the discussion together with uh, Professor Teang Choi, Philip, Tanner, myself and Shui. As you notice, uh, I'm having lunch all by myself. Um, that's not at all because they hate me or anything. Uh, trust me, uh, we are all very friendly. We, are try we usually try to have lunch all together. 
Uh, it's just because of the shifts, the way it is scheduled today. Uh, some people are taking care of the machine uh, right now while I'm having lunch and once I come back, uh, they will go for lunch and so on. So we try to manage like this. Sometimes it also happens that we manage to automate all our measurements so then some background measurements are running um, in the lab while we can go all together for lunch. Once I was back from the lunch, um, we realized that the helium level was getting low and also because we wanted to apply magnetic field for our measurements, it was better to refill the helium again. So this is the part of the liquid helium refilling process where we transfer liquid helium from an outside dewar into our cryostat inside which we have our sample kept in a very cold condition. Usually this helium refilling um, occurs or needs to happen every third or fourth day depending upon the consumption of the liquid helium. Now since all the uh, postdoc team is um, around, we wanted to update each other and brainstorm a little bit. So in the beginning we were updating each other about the condition of the tip, whether this was having enough magnetic contrast or not, whether this is good enough to go for electron spin resonance type of measurement or not. Once we decided on that, we could do a very quick ESR scan. So by using our lock-in measurement, we were approaching our tip closer and closer towards the atom while measuring our lock-in signal and that gives us a very quick measurement of the electron spin resonance signal. We were basically looking at that and trying to understand if this is a real ESR signal or not. In order to make sure that this is a real ESR signal, we have to do further measurements by applying external magnetic field and by seeing a Zeeman shift of that ESR signal, but that is something uh, we will do um, very soon, probably later this night or tomorrow morning. In order to do further measurements, we first have to know what we have measured so far and we constantly try to do our data analysis on the go and this is what Tanner is now spending time on. So he has to script um, partially for uh, understanding our measurements done until, until now and accordingly we will make our strategies to go on further. So by the end of the day, we still didn't have an answer whether this was a real ESR signal or not and whether the tip was worth it or not. So we might have to make another magnetic tip by picking up uh, further atoms or dropping atoms and picking them up again. Uh, this is probably what the night shift team is going to go for. And typically that's how it is until you really have your tip that will be with you for um, months uh, during which you can do your electron spin resonance measurement. So hopefully tomorrow by the time I come back I will have a good tip, at least that's what I asked them to make it for me and I can um, catch up from there and start uh, with ESR measurements. On a typical day, um, if I am in the day shift, uh, depending on the situation, I would go home at around 7 or 8 in the evening. On that day I was going home at 8 in the evening. If there is some more interesting measurements going on and I'm really into it, then I would be later than that, um, let's say 10. Uh, but usually the night shift people are already around, so they will take over and until we are back again the next morning, they will be there around in the lab. Um, unless they have an automated uh, measurement set up, uh, in which case they can go home earlier and uh, take a nap. If you want to know more about our research at QNS and if you want to be up to date with uh, what QNS is up to, uh, please follow our channel, subscribe and that's all for today. Thanks a lot and see you later.